So this week on Escape to the Country, we're in Lilliput, where I've just come through possibly the world's smallest door. Actually, this is a barn conversion project, and we're here to install this new EV charger from Zaptec, the Zaptec Go, which is ideal for property developers and new build developments. We're here with Tom from Hopkinson Electrical, so we're going to crack on and get the install done, but we'll come back to some of the great features for this type of new build installation later in the video. Now, the builder on this development has actually been very generous for the customer. They've actually positioned the EV charger in a useful location, i.e. where you're most likely to park the car, not in the closest position to the electrical distribution. So to do that, they've run an armoured cable out in a ducting and we've put in an EV block, which means this installation is incredibly simple because we've paired it up with the EV tower that just sits straight on top of that block. Now, of course, you're thinking, we could have just fixed it to this wall. Now, is a dry stone wall that's probably been here for hundreds of years a permanent installation? Well, yes, but they do have a tendency to fall down, so we think this is the best option. Let's have a look at some of the tech specs on this Zaptec Go charger, which has been designed specifically for the UK market, including that all-important pen fault protection. It has inbuilt DC leakage protection, upstream protection must be provided by an external RCD type A usually fitted in the consumer unit. IP54 environmental rating it is a socketed or untethered charger. The cable can be locked in place by the user through the app and it's available in six fabulous colours. Now we're midway through this job and I think we've got the difficult part out of the way which is terminating the armoured cable and this new gland plate within the EV tower has made that an absolute dream. Now, you may be thinking why we're fitting a single phase charger on what is a three phase property. Well, what do we always say on the channel when it comes to EV? Future proofing. Now, this is quite a large property. I suspect in the future, they may have more than one EV. So this is a convenient location. Just think we've got a duct in there. We've got our three phase cable here. We could easily tap back into here and add another charger on another phase, or of course, we could alternatively upgrade to a three-phase charger. And we have seen the Zaptec three-phase charger on the channel before. Now, before we got to this project, the armored cable had already been installed. And I always worry about how we're gonna get that into the charger, because a lot of the chargers that come from Europe haven't been designed to take into account that we're gonna terminate a steel-wired armored cable. Now, that's where this gland plate really comes in. We've then put a rubber cable in up to the actual charge point itself and then we're going to convert between the two using these Wago gel boxes, and this is the ideal application for this product. Now, while Tom's busy finalising those connections and doing a spot of testing, let's have a look at the world's poshest meter box. Now, we don't have that white Tupperware box on the side of your house. We've got this, and yes, it does look like a dog kennel or a log store. Now, interesting, the builder said when they developed this property, it was only £100 more to have three phase installed for the power supply. And so if we open this up here, this is what we like to see in meter boxes. Put bags of room in there. And we can see our three phase uh, incoming supply there and a PME earthing system, which means we need that pen fault protection in there. And obviously because the uh, distribution board is some distance from this cupboard, there's a rather generous uh, fused isolator there as well. And it's interesting, while we're on our electrification journey around this property, we see an air source heat pump. The first time we've actually seen one in the wild on the channel, and that shows you the direction we're going in. Now that has to be one of the simplest EV chargers that we've ever seen installed. Just three simple connections and those screwless connections that we like. However, there is a problem. Now, just Tom's busy inside the house connecting this up to the power, but that other essential connection we need to make is obviously to the internet so we can make this smart. And now we've got two problems on this property. The charger is a considerable distance from the house. So if we're gonna connect with the Wi-Fi that's built into there, we might struggle. We might need an outdoor access point. However, that bigger problem is the property hasn't even got the telephone line connected to it. And it might be some time before the homeowner manages to get that sorted, which would mean a return visit for the electrician. And that would mean you could inherit all those snagging problems and then the customer brings out that array of light fittings they've just bought from IKEA for you to install as well. However, Zaptec inside here is built a 4G connection so we can use the mobile phone network to commission this charger and we can be off site before the homeowner has even moved in. So let's hope the commissioning is as simple as the installation. I've got my Zaptec app. We've got an amber light on the charger here that says it is waiting for commissioning by an approved installer, which I uh, wouldn't quite put myself there, but I'll try my best. So on the app here, install the product. You can do that by scanning the QR code or entering the serial number, uh, which is what I've done here. 
So there we go. So the Zaptec Go charger is ready to be installed when it's powered on. Allow a Bluetooth access to connect. So let's go with that. Right, so now we're just waiting for Bluetooth. Oh, there we go. Well, we've got a flashing light there. Uh, the fuse recommended 32 amp. That's what we've got. We'll select that. The charging current. Because we didn't set that dip switch earlier on, we select that the zero, which means we can obviously set that through the app as well. Uh, so I'm setting that to 32 amp. Uh, we are on a TN and we're on L1. The country we're in, we're in North Yorkshire, which isn't actually a country yet. Um, hold on, no, we're not Switzerland. United Kingdom. I confirm the charging has been installed in accordance with local regulations. All right, let's have a look here. There we go. Now, installation complete handover manual to customer we've got a white led on there which means we're done wow i'm actually blown away by how simple this whole process has been now just to put that into context we arrived on this site this morning just after nine o'clock we'd never met tom before in our lives we've installed the ev tower onto that block he's done the wiring at the distribution mode. we've done some testing uh, we've had a scrap about in the skip thinking of you rick new glove Nearly got all the fingers in it. Had a look at the chemical toilet. And all the other fancy electrical kit that's installed this house. And it's now 10 to one. So we've actually, for the first time ever, finished the project and we're gonna get back to the unit and have some lunch. So Tom's done an absolutely fantastic job on the electrical installation in this property. And I think the Zaptec charger just wraps it up really just think a bit of surface dressing out here and this property is good to go for the homeowner now charge points you'll hear a lot of talk about the smart charge point regulations and zaptec have put a lot of technology to that charger to enable compliance if you'd like to understand more about it depending on when you're watching this video here you will find a cpd that can bring your knowledge bang up to date